Hi, welcome back to the channel. This rant is my response to some recent music news that really shocked and disappointed me. I'm talking about overt anti-free speech actions taken by five of my lifelong social activist musical heroes. Stick around. So this drama started when Neil Young gave an ultimatum to Spotify. That's the music streaming service that's also the home of Joe Rogan's incredibly popular podcast. So here's the gist. Joe Rogan hosts all kinds of people on the podcast. And they've got widely varying opinions about all kinds of topics. So on the topic of the pandemic, Rogan has invited doctors and other medical pros who have the mainstream points of view that we see everywhere in the so-called news media. But because Joe's a curious guy who actually wants to triangulate information and try to know the truth, he also invites experts who question the mainstream narrative. So sometime near the end of 2021, Rogan has a conversation with a widely published multiple patent holding vaccine expert named Robert Malone. And then he has another conversation with a world renowned internist and cardiologist a guy named Peter McCullough. So these guys are two bona fide experts. You know, they've got real world experience and they happen to believe that much, if not most of the mainstream information hasn't been accurate and that medically this whole COVID situation hasn't followed the long established rules of how medical science determines the best, most effective treatments for new threats. So I listened to these episodes and they were great. You know, it's clear that Malone is super knowledgeable about the technologies that are being promoted to fight the pandemic. And McCullough is a frontline doctor who cares about outcomes and he wants to help patients more than he cares about towing some medical pharmaceutical party line. So I want you to keep in mind that over centuries of progress, scientific and medical advancement have really been entirely based on trying and testing things, debating them, trying and testing more, debating again, etc. So, you know, if history teaches us anything about science, it's really that science is never settled. You know, it might seem settled until the next batch of experience, tests and data refine the understanding. So scientific inquiry and debate can never stop if we really want what's best for society and public health. But this past year, two powerful code words kind of crept into the collective vocabulary. I think they pose a threat to all of us and the rights we normally take for granted as Americans. So let me explain. Some very powerful interests decided that hesitancy itself was dangerous. There's a growing number of doctors who've been analyzing the CDC, VAERS, and other data from around the world, and they're witnessing what's happening with their own patients. And these doctors have felt compelled to share what they're experiencing. And more and more of the doctors have actually lost their jobs because of the nebulous crime of promoting hesitancy. And there's never really any charge. It's just you're promoting hesitancy. So for the first time in American medical history, if a doctor says anything that might make someone who even hears it hesitate to get the one form of treatment being promoted by a group of powerful but ethically compromised public health authorities, that doctor is promoting hesitancy and must be silenced. I mean, free speech be damned. Now, to accomplish that, anyone who's doing the historically normal thing of advancing science through debate is labeled immediately as a disseminator of misinformation. And the social media platforms now participate in labeling, suppressing, and deplatforming these doctors and scientists who are just doing what they've always done, right? Now, a question I think we all need to keep asking, and this is exactly why free speech and open debate have always been so highly coveted and protected here in the US, is who decides what's misinformation, right? Who decides? Because the same public health authorities labeling others as promoting misinformation have themselves been wrong as often as they've been right. I mean, a lot of their authoritative information turned out to be misinformation. The original data on which the lockdowns and other public health policies were based have pretty much all been proven as radically overstated. 
And in hindsight, I think we've also learned that warp speed and science don't mix well. Medical privacy and doctor-patient privilege have been tossed out the window, so free speech be damned and HIPAA regulations be damned too. And data be damned if we're really being honest, you know. For example, we know the CDC kept data from the public, effectively lying, maybe a noble lie, just for fear that the data would cause more hesitancy. They also refused to acknowledge the efficacy of natural immunity when all the data from everywhere has been acknowledging its importance. I mean, maybe that'll change. I hope so. What do you think? So there are lots of natural ways to boost immunity that are effective and well-known to fight viruses and save lives. The vitamins C and D are prime examples. The problem is vitamins don't make any money for pharmaceutical companies. Therefore, they don't help fund the government agencies that rely on pharma money and are supposed to keep the pharma companies honest at the same time. And let's not forget, this technology-only approach to fighting a virus is being brought to you by the same companies who sold the new generation of opioids as miracle painkillers that were safe and effective. These are the same companies that over the past 20 years have paid $80 billion in criminal fines for misrepresenting research and safety data and doing misleading marketing. So safe and effective has over and over proven to be a term that's just as meaningless as misinformation. And to make things worse, just because we're talking about emergency use inoculations, these hugely profitable companies are also shielded from liability. So if and when these jabs cause injuries or death, their bottom lines stay 100% healthy. So it's against this backdrop that Neil Young comes forward with his proclamation that Joe Rogan is peddling misinformation. And he demands that either Rogan's podcast needs to be silenced and kicked off of Spotify, or Neil is gonna pull his music off of the platform. I was speechless when I heard this. I mean, this is Neil Young we're talking about. For me, Neil's always been the poster child of the counterculture, you know, fighting the man and saying what has to be said to all the corrupt authorities, you know, howling about overreach. That is Neil to me. His relevance as a protest singer and songwriter was established right away with the song Ohio. And that came out less than a month after the Kent State shootings in 1970. The National Guard got called in to stop a nonviolent protest. Four unarmed students got shot, you know, four dead in Ohio. And on the B side of that same single, Stephen Still's brilliant song, Find the Cost of Freedom. I mean, that's it, the cost of freedom. So Neil, throughout his career, he never stopped writing protest songs after Ohio, you know. He pushed for the environment in songs like After the Gold Rush and Mother Earth National Anthem. He skewered racism in Southern Man in Alabama. He critiqued American foreign policy in Long Walk Home. He ripped everything about George Bush Sr. and his administration in Rockin' in the Free World. And then in 2006, he put out Living with War. Now, that is a whole album indicting Bush Jr.'s administration. It actually had a song called Let's Impeach the President. There was another song, Restless Consumer, all about the greed in capitalism and how it actually fosters human suffering and war. 2015, he releases the Monsanto Years, where he lambastes the company for pushing cancer-causing chemicals, GMO agriculture, basically destroying the food supply. And then in 2017, he writes this anthem of hope and resistance called Children of Destiny. Now, this is literally about taking a stand against corporate and governmental greed for the sake of future generations. One of the lines is, when money matters most and war is good for gain, the capital is yours, the people feel the pain. And it has a totally anthemic chorus. I mean, get this, stand up for what you believe, resist the powers that be. That's Neil Young to me. So I'm trying to understand how just five years later, Neil suddenly seems to believe everything the corporations and the government are saying. And he believes them so completely that he thinks no one, not even people who have devoted their entire careers to science and medicine, should be allowed to question 
or even talk about their own experiences and points of view. I mean, oh, the irony, right? That's exactly what Neil's been doing on all these topics for over 50 years. So I guess he wants to keep rocking in the free world, but not talking in the free world. I don't think he gets that in his current stance, he would have advocated silencing his own voice and censoring his own songs for fostering hesitancy about things like GMO foods and eroding blind trust in corporations and the government narrative. But here we are in 2022. I mean, all bets are off. Lots of things seem upside down. Neil just reverses everything he's ever stood for, and he decides now that it's noble to silence people. And then Joni Mitchell says, well, if Neil's doing it, I am too. I'm supporting him. And then the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost join in, Stephen Stills, Graham Nash, and David Crosby. These are some of my favorite artists and songwriters, and they've actually done it. They've pulled their music from Spotify. Take a look, I mean, all these grayed out ghost songs, as I call them, that, that was their music. So it's one thing to pull your own songs off of a platform. I mean, everyone has that right. But these artists have actually aided and abetted the authorities and media by making it kind of pseudo-fashionable to censor and silence legitimate voices. I mean, even world-renowned experts, right? And now the platforms are doing the censoring before we even get a chance to read or hear what they have to say. I mean, unless you're like me, because I'm determined to go and find the information. So does silencing well-educated medical and scientific points of view sound noble to you? Please tell me what you think in the comments. I would love to know. For me, from the standpoint of scientific advancement, democracy, and the real public good, you know, the long-term public good, I think they've got it dead wrong. And I go back to their protest songs for guidance and inspiration. I'm a child of the 60s and 70s, so I was raised on and loved those songs and their social activism. And those sentiments continue to influence me today. You know, here it is decades later. I'm still sort of feeling it. Stephen Stills, Buffalo Springfield, 1966, for what it's worth. And then Find the Cost of Freedom just a few years later. Graham Nash, 1971, Chicago. A few years later, he wrote a painfully beautiful ode to the oceans, 1975, it's called To the Last Whale. David Crosby, 1970, almost cut my hair, the ultimate statement of rebellion and determining that you're gonna stand up to the man. And then Joni, Big Yellow Taxi, right? One of the immortal lines, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. I mean, talk about an anti-development statement. Incredible songs. So a big part of why I loved and respected these five musicians so much is for speaking their minds and speaking out against anyone or any entity that was trying to silence alternative points of view. So... Neil Young decides that Joe Rogan is a purveyor of misinformation. Why? You know, Joe doesn't have a conflict of interest. He doesn't present himself as an expert. To me, he's just a curious guy asking questions, you know, like all of us really should. Yeah, sometimes the questions are going to produce uncomfortable answers. So what? You know, when it comes to advancing science, that's just how it works. Questions are the core of inquiry. Doctors and scientists try things, they compare notes. They ultimately have to prove what works and doesn't work, or they should have to prove it. They should have to prove what's safe and isn't safe, but it happens over time. That is, unless one side succeeds in silencing the other side, then we have a problem and real advancement stops right there. I don't know about you, I never make a major medical decision without seeking a second opinion. I think that's all Joe Rogan and some of his guests are giving us. It's a second opinion. Now, there is one more level of irony to this story that you should know about. You probably heard Neil Young recently sold half of his song publishing catalog rights to an investment fund called Hypnosis Songs. The deal was a reported $150 million. Neil, who will never sell out, got a $150 million paycheck. And guess what? Hypnosis is in a billion dollar partnership with a massive investment company called Blackstone, 
which happens to own huge stakes in pharma and biotech companies. Now, personally, I think when you sell your publishing catalog to a corporate entity owned by an even larger pro-pharma corporate behemoth, I think you waive the right to act like you're the rebel. And I think there's actually a pretty good chance that your rebellion is ultimately going to have the opposite of its intended effect. So, Neil, Joni, Stephen, Graham, David, as I see it, you've been duped into fighting on the wrong side of this battle. Because this isn't about so-called misinformation. It's not even about politics. It's actually about free speech. I am super disappointed you were so quick to sacrifice that based on ever-changing information and noble lies from the government and huge corporations. But here's the good news. It's not too late to reconsider and put your music back on Spotify so the younger generation can hear your songs and learn how to question authority and speak freely. That's my opinion. What is yours? Please leave a comment. All right, thanks for watching. Please, you know, take a moment to like the video. It means a lot to me and it helps the algorithm. Uh, next week, I promise I'll be back off my soapbox and onto more guitar discoveries. But if you don't want to wait, you can check out guitardiscoveries.com. You can check out this video about how playing guitar can positively affect your health. All right, stay healthy and safe. Keep making and playing music and see you soon.